So I highlighted the fact that the unemployment rate peaked in October uh, of 2009 for the general population. The unemployment rate was 10.1 percent. But this 10.1 percent for the total population masks a lot of differences. First of all, if we just look at the if we look at the the differences by age, which are the bars to the left on the graph, you see that unemployment is highest for those 16 to 24. And that's not surprising. I'm sure a lot of you have heard uh, that young people have the highest unemployment rate. If we were actually talking about teenagers, the unemployment rate is extraordinarily high. There, one in four teenagers are unemployed. S among 16 to 24 year olds, the unemployment rate is currently at uh, is currently at 18.6 percent, but it peaked at uh, it peaked at 19.6 percent in April 2010. So it peaked a lot later than the general unemployment rate for everyone else. It peaked in April, whereas the general peaked in October, and the and that's really driven by the fact that the unemployment rate for people 25 to 54, you might think of the prime age working population peaked at 9.2 percent in October of 2009. Interestingly, and I might even say frighteningly, the unemployment rate for people 55 years and over has continued to rise, and it's now at 7.3 percent. So traditionally, we think of the unemployment rate as being extraordinarily low for people over 55. Um, and indeed, if you look before the recession, you see it was 3.2. When we turn to looking at unemployment by race, we see that the unemployment rate uh, for whites peaked at 9.4 percent uh, and is now down to 8.8 percent. If you look at the unemployment rate for blacks, it looks like it hasn't come down at all at 15.7. Uh, depending on whether you're a glass half full or glass half empty person, I can tell you that the good or, or bad news is that it has come down because it actually peaked at 16.5. But like teenagers, it also peaked in April of this year and not October. So it continued to rise through April 2010 um, and has actually come down from that peak, high peak of 16.5. If we were uh, turn to Latinos, the unemployment rate uh, peaked in October at 13.1 and has come down to 12.6. To so there's obviously a lot of differences um, by uh, race and by age. And the next slide shows you gender differences um, in employment. Again, we see a somewhat different story when we break it down uh, for men and women. But the unemployment rate for men is currently 10.4 percent, and for women it's currently 8.8 percent. That's actually, for men, that's declined from the high of 11.4 in October 2009. For women, the unemployment rate hasn't come down at all. It's 8.8, .8 and that was its peak, and that was what it, where it was a year ago. And so if you look at the slide where I actually show you gender differences in employment, so this is the employment to population ratio. This is a percent of people over 16 who are actually have a job. You can see that this recession was harder on men. Their employment rate came down further and faster than it did for women. But women, it came down slower and more recently and hasn't had the kind of recovery that, that men has had. And of course, I put this, I actually showed you this from 1950 because what you see is just how much convergence there is and the employment uh, to population ratios of men and women over this 60-year uh, period. But this current recession has uh, helped bring these ratios even closer together. So uh, I want to show you the, uh, the last uh, a thing by to look by by population, uh, the employment to population ratios by race and ethnicity, and here you can really see that in the recession, the percent of people working fell off a cliff, um, and uh, is down at at a much lower place than it's been um, at any point since in the recent two decades. And most particularly concerning is if we look at. Uh, African Americans, we see that about one in two are currently working. Um, if we look at at uh, Latinos and whites, you see the ratios closer to about 60 percent. And there's not very much of a difference right now between Latinos and whites. During the the boom, Latinos were more likely to work than than whites were. So. 
The next thing I wanted to talk about was long-term unemployment. 42% of the unemployed, so there are uh, 14.8 million unemployed people, and 42% of them have been unemployed for longer than six months. And you can see in this chart that I've put up just how uh, the share of the long-term unemployment unemployed has grown over time. And much of that growth simply reflects how long it's been since we've been losing jobs. So this is not, uh, you know, this, this really reflects the fact that we've, been un that we've been in this recession for a long time and we haven't had a lot of job growth to get those people back to work, um, which is why we have a longer share who've been unemployed for a long time. So the last thing I wanted to talk about before I ended today was simply why aren't we getting more job growth? And I think that the, the best way to think about that is to turn to um, looking at some past recessions and what happened in the recession uh, in terms of, of job growth and uh, after the recession ended. So the shaded bars represent the recessionary period. And you can see the current recession. And after the current recession, you can see a small decrease in uh, um, a small decrease in the unemployment rate. If you compare that to the previous two recessions, the 2001 recession and the uh, 1991 recession, you see actually that those, in those recessions, unemployment continued to rise uh, substantially um, after the recovery had actually begun. And in the 2001 recession, they continued to lose jobs for almost two years after economic growth had returned. In this recession, it took us six months. After six months after economic growth returned, we started adding jobs. So it's typical in a recession that you continue to add, uh, lose jobs after economic growth has returned. Um, but in this recession, we, we returned a, a bit faster. Now, I should be, be fair and honest and say that if you look at, at previous recessions, much earlier recessions from the 50s and 60s, um, it looks like we are not adding jobs as quickly as they did in the 50s and, and 60s. And that we're, not also, we're also not adding jobs as fast as they did in the 80s. But there's a really important reason we're not adding jobs as fast as we did after the 1982 recession, and that's because we actually haven't seen the economic growth that we saw after the 1982 recession. So there's no evidence here that the 82 recession did a better job with job growth. Um, what happened in the, following the 82 recession is following the five quarters following the trough in economic growth, GDP, real GDP, had grown by almost 10 percent. It had grown by 9.8 percent. In contrast, we've grown by 3.5 percent. So uh, for we've had small amount of job growth, frankly, because we've had a small amount of GDP growth. If, uh, if you were to look at the number of months after uh, the non-farm employment trough until we had added one million private sector jobs. This occurred in this recession within 10 months. And I, that, that's pretty standard, to be, to be completely honest, that's pretty standard to what we've seen in, in previous recessions, um, that it has taken somewhere between 8 and 12, with one outlier recession, the 91 recession, where it took 20 months to add that one million jobs back. So uh, the other thing I wanted to point to in terms of thinking about where the job growth is coming from is what's happened to personal consumption. And so what I've shown here is normalizing personal consumption at 100 when the recession begins, looking at how much consumption fall, fell during the recession and then how much it's recovered. One thing you'll notice right away is that um, consumption didn't really fall in the, re the 2001 recession or even actually in the 82 recession but it did fall in all the previous recessions. But in every previous recession, consumption had recovered by the fifth quarter, by this point in the recovery, had recovered beyond uh, the pre-recession levels. And that's actually uh, barely true right now in this recovery. We've just had personal consumption hit the level that it was at at, uh, at the point that the recession began. And uh, one, uh, one final comparison with previous recessions I wanted to show is comparing this recession with the 2001 recession. You'll see that uh, if we look at the point where the recession ends, we have done a better job in this recession 
in having more GDP growth, so that means we should have had more job growth. And in fact, we have had more job growth, because if you look in that 2001 recession, I mean, I already told you this fact, so you're not going to be surprised to see it, we're still losing jobs five quarters out, um, even though there was positive GDP growth. So we're continuing to lose jobs. In this recession, we have turned around and been adding jobs. Now, we have not added enough jobs to be at the point we were at when the recession ended, let alone to be at the point where we were where we want to be, which is at the number of jobs we had before the recession began. Um, so we obviously still have a very, very long way to go. Uh, but this path we're on uh, it seems to be generating jobs uh, that are in proportion to the amount of economic growth we're experiencing. So the uh, my uh, very last two points I wanted to make is, is one thing is I, I hear a lot of debate in the media about whether or not we have structural unemployment, which means basically are we, uh, do we have a whole bunch of workers who just don't have the skills available for the jobs that are out there. And right now I just don't see evidence of that. And, uh, you know, the way I describe it when I talk to my friends is I'm waiting to hear stories of, of people beating down job offers. Because if what we had was a situation where employers were desperate to hire, but they couldn't find people with the right skills, the people out there who have the right skills, and there have got to be some of them, would be um, facing just amazing job offers, very high rates of pay, uh, tons of offers. Really, they're, they're, as a scarce resource, they would be in a lot of demand. And we just don't see that happening. And I think that's a, a really good indicator that there's not particular areas that are really hot where we just don't, where labor supply is just not kept up with, with labor demand. Instead, I think the problem is that we just don't have enough labor demand. And the, what the last slide I show, I'm showing you is the percent of small businesses with what they describe as hard to fill job openings. In other words, they're having a hard time finding somebody for the job that they have. And you can see that businesses always tell us they have a hard time finding people. And in booms, it can be up to a third of the positions are hard to find uh, fill positions. But right now, the percent of small businesses with hard to fill job openings is at a, at a low point since 1973. So uh, that's another piece of evidence that I take that we're just not in a place where we have lots of openings without the qualified workers. And so what I wanted to end on, um, I absolutely am not in the business of giving you any kind of forecast for where I think the economic, uh, where the economy or job growth is going. But I did just want to give you a metric to think about how many jobs we need to get the unemployment rate down where we want it. Because I think that that um, helps people understand the path we have ahead of us. As a You've probably heard repeated often in the press, we need to add about 125,000 jobs a month to keep the unemployment rate steady given the, the number of people who want to enter the labor market each month. Obviously, we don't want to keep it stable. We want to bring it down. And if we wanted to bring it down all the way to 5.7%, we would need to add 250,000 jobs a month on average for the next five years. So uh, we would need to do uh, start adding 250,000 jobs total, non-farm payrolls, from January 2011. And by January 2015, we would have hit that 5.7%. If we were adding something less, like 200,000 jobs a month over that period, we would be at 7.2% uh, unemployment. And if we're, if, if over that, uh, but that between 2011 and the beginning of 2015, what we added uh, this four-year period was only was 150,000 jobs a month, which is exactly where we were last month. We added 151,000 jobs. If we stay where we're at today um, in January 2015, we'd be at 8.7% unemployment. So that just gives you a little bit of a sense of what kind of job growth do we need to bring the unemployment rate down. And with that, I'll stop. Okay, well, let's all uh, give Betsy Stevenson a round of applause for an excellent job. Thank you.